place And I got the scenery set And then with a thumb Our umbrella's gonna bump And I said yes Pardon me Haven't we met Oh accidents can happen And then to one I'm gonna say yeah, yeah. There's a good chance I'm gonna get my hands on a little Just 
streets in Los Angeles. Am I right? Great names. We've got La Cienega and Cahuenga, Lankershim, Third. Just great names. There was a bit. Laugh while I get my guitar. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, actually, you know, my grandparents grew up while I tuned this. I'm just going to tell you about my grandparents. They grew up just a few, few blocks away. My grandma grew up uh, on Curson over by. Um, between Hollywood and Vista. In fact, her grandpa, mom, you, Eugene DeLacy, Delaney? Great, uh, yeah, her grandpa. Her grandpa built some of the first bungalows and, um, and planted some of the first palm trees in Hollywood itself. And she grew up across the street, which I think is the coolest one as I tune my guitar. She grew up across the street from Les Paul, who is a legend. He invented essentially the, yeah, jazz, great, and all of that. So she, at six years old, was one of the first people to hear stereo sound, which is awesome. And why can't my G-string get tuned? Um, uh, another great story. Well, I'm trying to, it's, yeah, I know. Hey, yo. <laughs> That's great. Uh, this, that, that section's going to be a little rough. Today. Um, uh, so, anyway. Uh, all right, we're just going to move on. Um, no, uh, one of my grandpa's favorite stories, anytime we wanted to see a famous person, he would go to the unemployment office because that's where all the actors would hang out. Hang out to pick up their unemployment check. That is not a joke. Um, so um, yeah, but a lot's a lot's changed. Actors unemployed? No. What are you talking about? Um, uh, grab some water. Okay. Ah, that finally water. No. Um, yeah. All right. Little guitar, little clap. One, two.
didn't grow up in Los Angeles. I grew up in a little town uh, called Rancho Murrieta. Yes, I uh, think cows, alfalfa, and two golf courses. Uh, like, a, like a waspy cowboy. Um, and also, I have a form of uh, musical theater Tourette's. It's my apologies. I do it like when I'm making eggs. It's just like, I'm making eggs, I'm making eggs. But yeah, it's just, it, I can't help it. I really apologize. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and, you know, I always notice how I describe where I'm, I'm, I'm from, according to the audience that I'm, that I'm talking to. So, obviously, a discerning crowd like you people. Yes. Uh, I grew up in a gorgeous, beautiful uh, golf course community tucked away against the uh, northern S California Sierra foothills, you know, or if it's like a rock and roll crowd, I'd be like, hey guys, yeah, I, uh, I grew up 15 miles south of Folsom Prison. It's hard. Jack Cash. Yes. Which actually is kind of how I describe it when I auditioned for uh, my first Broadway show which was Crybaby, uh, based on the John Waters film. Uh, so you're trying to get they turned it into a musical, go figure. And, <laughs> um, uh, it, it was crazy, Be finding myself in New York. I, I never lived in New York, I barely knew how to take the subway. I wasn't even a member of the Stage Actors Union, I was just a boy with a dream of being on television. <laughs> and I'm on Broadway, on Broadway, and it was, uh, <laughs> and this might be, actually, this is from Pride Baby, it might be one of the most romantic musical theater songs ever written. Remember, I'm like, oh, it's not like, the stars of the world shine their light on our love, and the night just like us is still young, and it's long, and it's slow. It's how I won my wife over, right there. She was like, look, I'm in. No, she wasn't. Um, <laughs> no, I want to bring up uh, my first guest. The lyrics by that were by David Jeverbaum and uh, music by Adam Schlesinger, uh, two of uh, brilliant team. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I'm going to bring up my first guest. And this is an amazing, amazing human being, a friend. Uh, Olivier Award-winning actress, that's right, the great Leslie Margarita is here. Um, yeah, Leslie and I, we first met, here, this is for you, you got that there? Do we have, do we have things for you too? So, Leslie just, it's... Give me my lyrics! <laughs> yeah, continue. You're on, yeah. I've got your lyrics right here. It's great. So, this is what happens, you do favors for friends. And, and friends this is a big one. You, this yeah, is a yeah, huge this is one. A huge here. one. Olivia, did I say that Olivia more? No, it's more that like talent can drink for free. So this is a huge favor for uh, you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Leslie and I met doing a reading at Disneyland. Oh yeah. At yeah. Disneyland of a Cinderella sequel. Was that, uh, uh, that was yeah. like called like In Search of the Silver or something. I don't know, but but uh, Leslie for the cruise ship for, for the, the cruise ship for Disney Cruise Ship, uh, and and uh, it was amazing. So Ali Mazi, who was in Cry Baby with me, played one of the stepsisters. Leslie was a sister, yes. stepsister, and then your mother, the wicked stepmother, was played by the original Maria in West Side Story, yeah. Carol Lawrence. Carol Lawrence. Amazing. It was and remarkable. She was we're gonna talk about that. Next time. We're gonna talk about that. It's okay. Sometimes you bring energy and you bring ideas, and sometimes they say no. Sometimes they're just like, we just, we're putting this on a cruise ship. Listen, Chardonnay happened between <laughs> when Audra was up here singing and you started Chardonnay has been happening. I don't know what that means. Um, you will. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 no, but we share a love of music theater, we do. of Star Wars. Oh my gosh, we're oh. Star Wars geeks. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was at the Star Wars convention because that's where I go. Where are you? And you were doing Star Wars in 30 minutes. Yeah, Star Wars trilogy in 30 minutes. And you were Luke Skywalker. It was. was like, Big shout out to Star Wars fans. Star Wars Paris. Yeah. Have you guys heard of Star Wars? Wars? No. Okay. okay. Anyway, so uh, yeah. Leslie and I, we just, I'm now, I'm, this is kind of early, in the early stages. We're going to do a two-person uh, Les Mis, actually. It's called The Miserable Duh. 
I, I, no, no, I, I, I just told her about it, but all we need is a theater, some money, music director, scripts. I, actually, I literally just told her about it, so okay. It, it sounds Should like a great, a, a great idea. Okay, this song, I, I dreamed a dream. <laughs> I know I dreamed a dream more than I know this song, so. Okay. <laughs> Like, yeah, of course, because whatever it's me. Yeah. And then she's like, here's this song from Crabby. And. <laughs> <laughs> Our friendship's over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 can we provoke her with tickets? Can we. No, no, her no, to no. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Okay. <laughs> here we go. I suffered through the measles. I made it through the mumps. Chicken pox was nothing. I nicknamed all the bumps. <laughs> but now my palms are sweaty and my tickers skipping thumps. My skin is turning green. My thoughts are so unclean. I think Cupid slipped a Mickey in my polio vaccine. I'm infected.
the brother, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. No, no, keep paying attention to her. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> no, uh, Michael Orleans. Yeah. Uh, how lucky I was to say yes to come and do this gig. Um, you might know Michael from uh, uh, one of the voice coaches on American Idol. You played for Kristen Chenoweth, for Catherine McPhee, and what? Yeah, oh sure, yeah. And uh, I'm so, we're just, we are absolutely delighted that you guys are here for our song time tribute. So, no, they're just, there aren't enough song time tributes right now. They're just, there aren't. Uh, and so, uh, no, we even, I even kept up with a couple names. Uh, side by Side by Snyder. I think that was a pretty good one. Um, send in the Clown is another option. I think two options is good. I think two is good. We'll move on. Next person. All right. <laughs> So, um, you know who didn't write the book to cry baby Michael? Sondheim. Yeah, he didn't do that. But who did was uh, Mark O'Donnell and Tom Meehan, who are just uh, brilliant. And Tom was a, a, a longtime collaborator of, uh, with Mel Brooks. Uh, Blazing Saddles, you might have heard of, Spaceballs, so just keep throwing out the producers, you, you name it. Uh, and while we were doing previews, while we were putting Crybaby up, um, the show Young Frankenstein, just down the road, uh, was in previews as well. And I remember uh, Mel Brooks came backstage, Tom brought him backstage and came into my dressing room and, and, and Mel said, uh, he said, how's it going? And I said, well, we're, just, we're, we're fighting a good fight. We were late in the preview process and things needed to get moving a little bit. And uh, Mel, he stopped and he said, the audience right now, they're, they're thinking from here. And if you can get them to think from here, and he touched my chest, I said, if you can get them to think from here, you got them. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if we got them on Crybaby, but it's uh, words I've, I've tried to bring to my, my work, and my life, and everything. So this next song is a gorgeous song um, from a musical called All American. And uh, the book was written by none other than Mel Brooks. Thank you. 
upon a time It's great. Drums. Did there, weren't there drums here? There was a band here, right? There, so weird. Oh, non you. That's it. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, no, but one song she never skips, and one song I, I love to sing uh, is from a... <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, we're skipping that. I was going to do a bit more where I sang. I'm just going to tell you about the bit, and then we can... <laughs> Uh, I was gonna sing my favorite things to you, be like, oh, guess what it is? Rain drop song, and I was like, no, nah, I'm just kidding. With you. And jazz. So that's it. Yeah, as jazzy as possible. Oh, just good. okay. Anyway, um, you guys have a good time. How is everyone over here? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot. All that has me folks. It's great. Hi. Hello. Um, so, <clears throat> what the hell was I talking about? We have no. We have no way of knowing. Um, my favorite things, as if I can see this. I'm looking down as if I can see it. So, <laughs> so Carousel, I, I had the pleasure and honor of playing Billy Bigelow Carousel 11 years ago at uh, the Good Speed Opera House. Um, uh, and uh, while I was there, I had an audition for a show. Um, I know this show might be the thing, but this audition was for Diner the Musical, Barry Levinson, uh, who penned the and who wrote and directed the script. Uh, the movie had turned it into a musical with Cheryl Crow playing the music. And so I was very excited. I rented a car and I drove down from Connecticut. And uh, I went in and I sang the songs, I read the scenes, and then they said, uh, hey, do you mind singing a little something from your book? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, except I left it in Connecticut, two and a half hours away. Uh, so they had me step outside the room and I was like, okay, great. And Bernie tells him Casper that came out and he said, Yeah, I think they, they got enough. Um, you can just you can head on home. Thank you so much. So dejected, I walked down 43rd to Chipotle and <laughs> I, I ordered a chicken burrito with guac. And uh, as I'm paying for my burrito, uh, I get a phone call and it's Telsey's office. And they're like, Okay, you got to come back here. We found an intern who can play the piano for you and you're going to sing If I Loved You. And I said, Okay, all right, fine. So I, I fly back up, run back up, and I get to the 10th floor of Telsey's office, and I'm like, I'm here, great. And they said, the office, that, uh, the, the place we're gonna play the room is down on the third floor, so we're, we gotta head down there. So I'm in, in a tiny, 311 West 43rd Street has like the smallest elevator, bins, and it's me. And then, you know, Emmy winning casting director Bernie Telsey, and uh, the director Kathleen Marshall, who's got, I think she's got a Tony, and then I've got, um, well, Oscar winning um, Mary Levinson, and of course Grammy winning Cheryl Crow, and they're just, and we're just in and, and my Chipotle burrito with wine. Um, so, so we get down to the third floor, we step out, and, and Cheryl goes, says to Bernie, she says, This is a lot like that show Smash, huh? And Bernie goes, This is exactly like that show Smash. <laughs> so we get into the room, and, and um, <clears throat> Barry Levinson wants me, he's like, Can you swing it? Like Sinatra, swing if I'd love to. Uh, to Sinatra, like Sinatra, and, and I look over at my piano player, who's an intern, and I go, do you think you could do that? She goes, I'm actually mostly a trombone player. <laughs> and off we went. <laughs> Pass me by. 
was actually in the movie Carousel. He was forced to do the role of Billy Bigelow in Carousel, which I think is the craziest thing. He was so excited to do it, and then uh, he went through all of the press, and he recorded things, and I even had costumes, and rehearsed, and the studio came up to him. On the first day of filming, they said, well, we want to we want to shoot this in uh, Cinemascope and Cinemascope 55, which obviously, sir, you know that that's a larger format. I think I think we all know Cinemascope 55, right? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so they, we're going to have to shoot it twice. We're going to have to shoot it with a smaller camera. I don't know. And uh, there is a famous joke that, that goes that used to go around Hollywood. Uh, what is one thing that you never hear on a Frank Sinatra set? Take two. Uh, and he said, I'm not getting paid to make two movies. And he walked on the first day of shooting. Frank Sinatra left. And uh, the, the writer, producer, uh, uh, Henry Efron, he went up to Shirley Jones. He's like, you gotta, you gotta get Gordon. Get Gordon. I, I don't know what else to do. And he gave him, he gave him a change out of his pocket. She went to the, the, the payphone and uh, she called Gordon McRae, uh, who was her her co-star in the movie Oklahoma as well. And said, Gordon, Sinatra's out. You gotta come down here. He says, Great. Give me a week. I need to lose ten pounds. <laughs> yeah, and history was made. And not because of the, the, the movie, because he lost ten pounds in a week. <laughs> who, who does this? I don't know. He must have. Judy Garland's person or something. Oh, <laughs> no. oh, too soon. Too soon? It was too soon. It was too soon. It was not. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, um, I finished singing uh, the Sloan Sinatra version of If I Loved You, and I said, do you mind if I just, just sing it like Gordon McRae would sing it, like legit, um, uh, like I did eight shows a week uh, at Goodspeed Opera House in East Haddam, Connecticut. Super into that. Um, 
Where on earth are we? What's happening? But that's that. I did that. And I did their microphone cords and everything. Um, so if then, if then, I don't know. Well, I did do that show, but if I loved you. Um, it's, same difference. Same, same, same difference. Uh, so if I loved you, I was actually a duet, right? And speaking of duets, my career. Yes. Do you want to do one with you? Weird, no, God, no. God, no. It's, no, he's a gorgeous voice. This man, this treasure. No, um, I always wanted to do um, Andrea Bocelli's The Prayer. Yeah, because I do such a mean Celine Dion. It is not, because I have no idea. Just think, it's great. So I, I said, Mike, but I can't sing all the parts. I was like, Michael, okay, who do we get to to sing this with me? And the first name out of your face hole was the name Sophie Polano. That's right. And that meant two things. One, I was not going to get to do Celine Dion. Which sucks. I know, I'm disappointed. Uh, and two, this, this human being must be a fantastic singer and performer. Um, so I want to bring to the stage Sophie Polono. If you're ready. We're going to ditch, we're going to ditch that, we're going to ditch that. Well, this is, there it is, Italian for you. Sophie is actually a senior at Burroughs High School in Burbank, which is awesome. And she's going to the prestigious. Carnegie Mellon to study Carnegie. theater. Yes, Carnegie, Dale Carnegie, and I go way back. And he, he taught me how to win friends and influence people. It's crazy. Um, so, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> so, um, actually, my dad did. He read the book. I just got the close notes. Anyway, um, so Sophie, so you're going there. There's like six people. They like nobody. Like thousands of people audition, and then and you you got it. What song did I just? I need to know. The inquiring mind What song did you sing for your audition? Well, it was a couple. Okay. It was it was quite an intense process. Oh, like, yeah. They they brought you in a room. They're like, sing everything you have, kind of thing. So really? I sang like love from Charlie Girl. I don't know if anyone here knows that. It's oh, very like you have to bring it to underground. That's great. Stuff. Yeah, you do. And then I sang like. Two other like songs that no one here has heard of because college auditions, and then they were the, the woman was like, um, I don't, I don't want any of these. Um, I want something else. And I was like, okay, I don't know. Um, uh, I at that point I had just come back from Young Arts Week, and I was like, they just gave me this song Young Arts Week called At Long Last for Bright Star. I don't know if anyone here has heard of it. And so I was like, I don't have sheet music. She's like, pull up a track. And I was like, okay. So on the spot sang that song. And then this other guy was like, okay, now sing a pop song a cappella for us. She's a dance they, monkey, this is amazing. Was, okay. <laughs> it doesn't stop with college. This is no, literally gonna be the rest stuff. of your life. And people are like, yeah, not dance, not sing. I'll be like, okay, James, I'll find what do you need. Okay, all right, I got it. Did I get it? I yeah. didn't get it. So I, I sang um, Alone by Heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, after that, that, you know, I guess it worked. I guess it worked out. Yeah. Um, but they gave me a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Now, now this is important for this job qualification. How is your Celine Dion impression? Flawless. Flaw. Dude. Oh, how is your she really? Look at this girl. She, she honestly, she does bring the good stuff. She's a lot of talk. All right. Um, uh, you want to do it? Can you kind of hear your Celine Dion before we dive into something? Okay. And there were nights, like a little bit of that. Yeah, okay. Okay, keep going, keep going. And there were nights when the wind was so cold. So she got the fish. <laughs> yeah, I dabble. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. Okay. Should we just sip it and give this song its face? And we are going to... Uh... I'm going to butcher some Italian now. How's she doing? Place where we'll 
briefly, very, very, very briefly, um, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, this comes uh, by request. This looks like it's a good eye. I have never been done this. And this is weird. Just look at this. I don't know. This is the best way to set up a romantic song. No, this is all. Um, sounds like I gotta tune this shit again. Okay. I need a guy. Can I find a guy? I need a guy. Well, like, like a... Like a tech guy, not like that, Bruce. Come on. <laughs> well, the gentleman, Bruce Millan, trying to back. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, Frank Sinatra joke was his. I just got to give him a shout out right there. Um, thank you for that, Bruce. Yeah, you can tune a piano. You know, don't do this shit in the middle of a show. It'll slow it all down. So yeah, all right. <clears throat> Two bucks. Two bucks. Two bucks. Two bucks. Oh boy, you got a break in the bank. All right. It's called Until the Moon Goes Down, and hopefully I don't scream too much. <laughs> It's been a while. 
As far as I can see 
It's a hundred miles till you're right there with me. Oh, the road keeps leading me home. Oh, the road you know me well. Oh, the road is smooth and gravel and stone. It's a hundred miles as far as I can tell. It's a hundred miles. So that was that bit. I hope you enjoyed it. Good. Okay. Um, I auditioned for the musical Book of Mormon. Yeah, seven times. Seven friggin' times. And finally got to laugh. The, the point I was. What, how many was it? Was that right? It was awful. It was awful. Yeah. Yeah. And then one time I tried not to go and. <laughs> And Scott Rudin chewed her out for half hour. So it was perfect. It was great. So you're a saint. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Um, uh, yeah, so instead, I have a friend, and I kind of didn't warn him about this. Jared Gertner is here in the audience. Jared? Okay, so Jared and I have done a bunch of shows. We've done Beauty and the Beast. Can you get up here? I was going to do it there, but can you come up here? Would you please, please jump up with me? Bear with me, and I hope you freaking warmed up. Did you warm up? Are you going to hate me? Are you going to hate me if we do this? We're going to do this. You have to go up the ramp, but specialists. Yeah, just go that way. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, so Jared Gertner also, so he, he did Book of Mormon on the West End, was uh, Olivier nominated, but most importantly, um, we met. Hey! No, Jared Gertner. Are you hearing me? Look at <laughs> um, we actually did a crew night, buddy. <laughs> Wait, are my drinks coming now? Like, I don't know. How, many, how much did he drink? Did Not he drink a lot? Okay, okay. Alright, okay. Mary Faber's there. Um, 
So, so what was I? Uh, yeah, and then the, look at all this. Uh, no, didn't we do a cruise ship thing? Yeah, Beauty and the Beast. We did a cruise ship thing for Beauty and the Beast. So I, I didn't even realize we workshopped two. I workshopped one, two, and yeah. we did one together, mm -hmm. and then we did Beauty and the Beast for real, and then we did Beauty and the Beast Panto with Michael. With Michael, mm -hmm. that's actually yeah, that's how how, how we met Michael up in Sacramento. And yeah. yeah. So what, what I'm saying is, is I'm here. I don't know. The problem that is, you are here to do it because. I have done so many shows with you, and I feel like I need you by my side. You, you are the wind beneath my wings. You are the breeze, the air I breathe. I consume you. I don't know what that means. I'm into it though. Okay, but can you do me, but mostly me? Is it me? So? Okay, okay, you're good. Okay, okay. Okay, great. And if you don't know it, it doesn't matter because I did it for three and a half years. I think it'll come back. Okay. You and me, but mostly me Are gonna change the world forever Cause I can do most anything And I can stand next to you and watch I can hear all the news, a sidekick Every captain needs a mate Every dinner needs a side dish On a slightly smaller plate And now we're seeing eye to eye It's so great we can But I would do it like in a Josh Gad voice. I was like, oh, it's like he's a little bit. Um, anyway. No offense. You did fantastic. That was an honor. Oh, God. Jared Gardner, I love you. I love you. Okay. Woo! 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 Time to get serious, folks. Six weeks after I had my first child, who I will not mention by name. Um, <laughs> Um, I got an audition for a new musical um, that would end up changing my life, but uh, um, as they all do. <laughs> um, but uh, this audition was for If Then the Musical, starring uh, Adele Dazeem. Uh, you, yes, you guys know her as Adina Menzel. Um, God, that was weird. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> The song that, that I was asked to sing was this soliloquy type song about having a kid, and it was surreal having just had my child. And the first time I heard this song, Oliver was six weeks old and in a pack and play 
laying asleep next to me while I'm listening to it on headphones and I'm like weeping and my wife comes home and I'm like, you don't hear this song. And um, I went and flew to New York and I, and I, and I booked the show and uh, I ended up getting to do the show again when we went on tour and we had, Willow was six months old when we went on tour. So I got to sing the song again, having a second kid and I wept even more. Um, uh, there was, this is just something so special about getting to sing kind of about my life. And uh, so, here's thank you. <coughs> See if I can get through it. Hey kid, everyone's waiting on you, kid. Everyone's wondering what you'll do, kid. It's true, kid. Me too, kid. Hey, kid, we're so excited just to know you'll soon be here. Say, kid, we're both delighted. The let me not seem so clear. But I did my OB rotation, so I know the ins and outs. And you're an act of God's creation, so I'm fine with all the doubts. I'm a doctor and a soldier. I've been shelled and under fire. But kid, if I say that you don't scare me, I'm a liar. Now, kid, you did surprise me, though I know the facts of life. Wow, well, kid, it terrifies me just to save my pregnant wife. Because, kid, I gotta tell ya, I'm not ready, not bit. And there's this macho act I'll sell ya, well, inside I lose my shit. That I don't want you, as I do despite my fears. But kid, is it true? You'll stick around for 18 years. <laughs> then the call comes on the iPhone. I grab a cab across town. I find her on the fourth floor, and they've got her in the gown. She's never looked less lovely. She's a girl, but she's got gas. And the labor's 18 hours. Oh my god, kid, move your ass. Uh, comes from a brilliant 
musical that hopefully will see the light of day. Someday see the lights of Broadway. Uh, this song is written by Marcy Heisler and Zeta Goldrich. Um, yeah, based on, uh, or based on, uh, it, it's so, so Hollywood Romance is the name of the show. And it's, it's sort of a Philadelphia story type story. And uh, but it's, it's about a gay action hero um, who is, he and his partner slash manager are trying really hard to keep that closet door shut. And um, this song comes uh, after uh, our, our 